All right, Lady, what is this? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Show and Tell. Hi. Hello. I'm here. I'm closer. Um, well, show and tell to me, Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada, at the Ada Fruit headquarters in downtown Manhattan, where we're broadcasting live. But uh, what we're going to talk about for the next 30 minutes is all the cool people in the maker, engineer, hacker, and coding community. What are they up to? What are they doing? We have some special guests as well. First yeah. up, First up coming is, to us is Jay. Uh, and this is a big deal for us because we've known each other online, but this is the first time that the show and tell uh, hosting has intersected. Yes. So uh, big fans, we get to we meet we get to meet the the, uh, the people that we uh, idolize. So Jay, Jay w- head, what do you got yeah. going on? Hey, I'm just wearing a pumpkin head. I'm all in Jack O'Lantern system. Ooh. This perfect for costumes. That's cool. Oh, neat. So is that sound activated and also like knock activated? How is it How is it doing that stuff? Uh, right now, I'm using a Adafruit trinket on the inside here with the uh, microphone sound system and a little power booster. The problem is that the code is a little bit iffy, so I have to play around with it a little bit more for it doesn't catch every sound. But yeah. most of the time when I'm quiet, you can't see the mouth. But as soon as I start talking into it or talking yeah. near it, it's, no, yeah. it, it, it's tracking well. How do you control the iris opening and closing? The iris is actually a hacked servo, so sometimes when a servo breaks, instead of tossing it out, I will open it up and take it apart and wire just the motor to a controller. Yeah. So I have that with this switch here. So I'm like, oh, it's mechanical. Yeah, that way I can kind of control the emotions when I like do things, and I can like show people like, oh, you know, it's fun that way. I like that. It's cool. I've seen a lot of good like cosplay, especially like Spider-Man cosplay or Deadpool cosplay. They'll have irised eyes because they, if you have a full mask on, it's hard to emote. Yeah. So the only thing you can do is have your eye, you know, your eyes or your emotions. It's kind of cool. It's definitely something that I went into when doing this was because of that, because I decided to go with like a costume type of prop because of like Halloween coming up. Like I have an excuse to wear this. Yeah. Like the J.O. Lantern. That's right. That's good. <laughs> I made All right, up. it looks cool. All right, are you gonna do a write up or some more documentation on this, or is this a special yeah. sneak peek? Oh no, yeah, I would definitely. I'll be on um, our hack. Was it hack a pumpkin tomorrow? I'll be on hack a pumpkin tomorrow with okay. Kevin, of course, and other people, and we're gonna be hosting it. And I'll show it there. And of course, there's a video coming out because, of course, I made a video about it. I did a write up already, so definitely stay tuned. You'll be able to follow my guide and maybe mm-hmm. learn something from it. All right, yeah. love it. And. Um, I uh, talked to uh, DigiKey, so we're going to help get the word out tomorrow. So um, we're going to retweet it and everything. So everyone join in. If you like Adafruit stuff, you're watching videos, um, this is kind of one big one big community and family. Um, and uh, last up, before we go on to the next person, Jay, thank you so much for helping popularize the idea of companion robots. We've always been doing robot friends, not robot enemies. Mm-hmm. And These are robot friends, and, for sure. And thank you for doing that, because I think people need to see that it's not just like, combat robots and mm-hmm. you know that's solved like people do that we, we're doing something else like our we, robots need, we don't and, need robots with guns on them we need robots that yeah are friendly. So hang out and just talk to you and stuff i actually just came back from the museum with aussie <laughs> i went to the museum yeah, I I thought, with the aussie on my head and I just yeah over. we're on your instagrams it looked, you did a workshop with kids and stuff like that yeah i did that uh, this weekend and working on some small other stuff too to like share about I'm designing more robots to of course yeah. For people to have more of a distinguished and design thing of like, hey, I want this type of robot or I want this type of robot. Yeah. So more robots will be coming from Jay. Yeah. More robots. Th- and again, thank you so much because it's hard to show people that robotics aren't, you know, weapons all the time. Because that's like everyone watches Terminator, everyone does stuff, yeah. and it's like AI is going to kill us. It's like, well, actually, we can make these things and take the best of us and, and put ourselves in that instead of the worst of us. So, anyways. Yeah. I don't want Terminator. I want Baymax. Yeah. There you go. I want a robot to like read stories to me and stuff. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Hey, well, thank you. I will so see you again soon. Yeah. Later. Bye. Good to see you. All right. This is Maker Power Hour. Next up, Simon. Mr. Simon. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. So we've known Simon forever. We stock kits, and uh, you have a new book. I'm gonna do a little That's bit nice. of a screen share, and um, you're kind of like one of the fundamental particles in the. Uh, the maker universe. Um, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> but I've been writing books for a while. Oh, every time someone comes um, out, you have a book and stuff. So here's your new book. Tell us, book. Tell tell us about this book. and tell us about your kit. Sure. Well, it's um, all about programming the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, and it's um, I aim it really at teaching Python, no matter what you're going to do with it, really. So 
quite almost half the book really is just really straight learning Python. So you don't need to know any programming at all before you start on this. And then I kind of introduce some electronics to it as well. Uh, so just connecting up LEDs and um, servo motors and, you know, so the simple things like that just to kind of get you started. But really it's, it's a sort of, um, you know, getting started book very much for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Because so if, if anyone doesn't know the Pico, the Pico is quite different from the other Raspberry Pis. The, all the other Raspberry Pis are single board computers, whereas the Pico is very much a microcontroller. Uh, it's not, you're not running an operating system. It's not a heavyweight uh, device by any means. It's sort of, and it's very low cost as well. And of course it uses the RP2040 um, chip, uh, microcontroller chip from Raspberry Pi, um, as do, uh, several, quite a few Adafruit fruit products now, I believe. So, you know, it's, um, it, the, what you learn in here would help you with that as well. Although I, I tend to, I'm, for this, I'm using um, MicroPython with a little bit about CircuitPython, but mostly MicroPython because that's kind of the official Raspberry Pi line on the, uh, the Python user. The, the, the good news is they're, they're, they're very synced up now and people can, whatever project you want to do, just figure out which flavor you want. Um, yeah. and so it really doesn't matter. If you want to do keyboard stuff, do CircuitPython. If you want to like hit some lower level stuff, use MicroPython. Yeah, and all our, our drivers, you know, not knowing about the Pico, we wrote all of our CircuitPython drivers and example code for both Pico work and also Raspberry Pi. It'll work uh, for single board computers or for microcontrollers. So yeah. I feel like oh, yeah, you're, you're combining. Yeah, it's very difficult decision, but you know, what to say. Um, what to use really and I thought it doesn't really matter that much you just have to start somewhere because this is a sort of getting you started guys so once you yeah. you know learn python then you can jump straight into circuit python that's our easy. vibe too it's like you know what if you learn python you now have a lifelong skill that you yeah. can carry up from like machine learning and data science and now microcontrollers and all that so I, I like your approach with starting out with python and then like now we can have something blank isn't this crazy Oh, well, yeah. the book is, um, when's it shipping right. so people can pick it up? Uh, it's shipping? available now. Um, it's uh, via uh, Amazon, but um, also um, I believe you're going to be stocking it fairly soon, yeah. I hope. So yes. And then you great. have a kit as well, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, let me just show you. That. I'm going to take your so book a, off the screen. It goes along with the uh, book. It's not essential. Um, you can get by, you know, most of the books just using the built-in LED and the kind of Paper clip as a switch, uh, connecting you know connecting pins, just to learn the basic principles and things. But the kit um, includes well, the main thing on the kit that's really useful is for some reason the Pico. Uh, I don't know if you can see this on here. It grabs the focus or not? Uh, but the um, the Pico has the silk screen telling you which pin is which actually on the underside of the board. So when you put Pico into breadboard, you can't tell which pins which without counting down the rows which you know it's quite easy to get the wrong one and things so and in fact i'll show you on the book it's the easiest way to see when you put the pico into this uh, breadboard that we include in the kit it actually puts the labels for the pins onto the breadboard which is just oh, handy. a lot easier for, for that uh, and then you get a little servo motor um, you get a little bag of components with a uh, trim pot a um, uh, a photo transistor, a few LEDs, and a buzzer, and a couple of other components in there as well. And it just, and the book, uh, and there's a separate set of instructions, I should say, that go with the kit. So you can buy the kit by its own and not bother buying the book. And, the, and if you do that, you've kind of got a more project-based uh, booklet that you can download that um, goes along with the kit. Right. We okay. will have that in the store. We'll have yes. the book in the store. And... Uh, Please uh, come back. Maybe show a project every once in a while on the show uh, after we have everything. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. All right. Good yeah. to see you. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for yeah. staying nice up later. Or, later waking up early. One of the two. <laughs> All right. Bye, Simon. Bye, Simon. All right. Next up, we're going to go to Melissa. Melissa, what you got going on? I have the um, the Circuit Python code editor here, and I've been working on oh, wow. optimizing it for mobile and enabling buttons. Uh, so you can see this is like for I have it emulating a phone on my screen right now for the size and you can go to like either serial or you can flip it back to the editor it has the uh, different menu options here. Uh, I'm going to show it to you in the full size here on the desktop here. 
So I've, I've added like some file functions so you can go ahead and kind of browse down to where you want and you can open something like this and then it takes just a minute and then it loads it and it updates the where you want it. You can go to a new one if you want. Uh, you can hit save and run and it'll, um, if it hasn't been saved, it'll go back to the last folder you're at. Um, uh, and then it'll actually go and switch over to the REPL and run it when you have it there. Cool. So, this is neat. All right. When will people be able to play around with this, perhaps? I have a pull request in. Um, and as soon as that's merged, then uh, hopefully in the next few days, then mm -hmm. people will be able to get on there. All right. All right. Sweet. Nice work, Melissa. Thank I know this has, been a, this has been a quest that you've been on for quite a bit. It yeah. looks really good. It looks really, really good. Nice posters. Go. Yeah, nice posters. In the background. Oh, thanks. <laughs> all right, collect them all. All, all right, right, thanks, Melissa. All right, next up, Noe and Pedro. Noe, Noe. Noe, Noe. Pedro went to go walk the dog. He will be okay. here no, next. No, you use a local <laughs> stick and disappear. Oh no! <laughs> it's your brother, man. He's, He's around, the, just not you're right just now. Right? Your little brother. <laughs> yeah, I right. knew he was going to turn into Highlander at some point with you too. Okay, cool. <laughs> So that's so. This is this week's project. It's the time stick. It's a prop from the Disney Plus series Loki. Uh, let me show you guys the diffuser bit because that's kind of the fun part. Uh, so here is the diffuser. Let me turn it on. So I got the slide switch and the feather hidden inside the handle here. And so I got my little slide switch there. It's got a built-in speaker. And instead of using NeoPixels, we thought it'd be a good idea to use the three watt RGB LED because it's a lot brighter. I actually like the look of it. It's very, you know, it's got a point source look to it. Yeah, it's really, it's it's really bright too. And you can play around with the different brightnesses and uh, tie it to the thresholds. Um, so it's got the prop maker featherwing and it's really loud. <laughs> but one of the things okay. I learned uh, when making props is like, it's always a pain to get to the USB port. Uh, so I wanted this one to be kind of easy to get to it. So this is the pommel, and this kind of screws out. And then you have access to this uh, oh, USB port cool. right there. And this kind of comes out. I really like cool. this design. Yeah. This is yeah, good. It's, it's really nice. It's got a rail, too, so it's not, like, uh, rotating around inside mm. the handle. So that fits in there nicely. It also has a pull tab so that you can actually pull it out when you need to. Um, yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that I, I want to start doing on all the props is to make it so that the pommel no, like and the this circuit technique. are all down there. It's like, oh, man, it sounds like crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, the speaker's actually hidden inside this little bit there, and that's pretty much it. This is just some screw assembly here, so it all just screws together. And one of the other things, let me, let me turn this on for a second because I'm really excited about this bit. Oh, I wanted man. all of those pieces to be modular, so this kind of comes out, and then you got access to the, uh, the RGB oh. LED there. And then I figured, you know what? I did a project the other year, or it's this, and I thought uh, it'd be a fun idea. That's funny. To this. And um, hey, maybe he has two faces too. Ah! So <laughs> I thought it'd be kind of fun to just like, That's instead funny. of a pumpkin, I do this. And uh, hey, it lights up, right? That's cute. And you know, if folks are want to build, this is like a like a safety thing, right? Not because not you're going to hit somebody, but they can see you, right? It's really bright. And uh, just so everyone knows, Adafruit is not associated with Lego yes. or, or, or Lego oh. brand companies. Don't don't cop us on the Lego yeah. stuff. Sorry. Yep. Well, I'm just gonna say it. Everybody knows. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, that, but that's the Swiss project. There's a learn guide. <laughs> And there's a video too on YouTube. I think there's yeah. a video. We're going to be showing all this next week and more, and then your hosting show until next week. So thank you. Anyway. That's right. Maybe Pedro will come back uh, if I can figure out how to bring him back. Yeah. This. I'll get on. Got to go to the void beyond the end of time and get him back. Sorry. Careful for how many wishes he you have. is the Lego. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> all right, folks. Right, thanks. Bye. All right. Next. Uh, Scott. All right, Scott, Hello. you've been doing really interesting, weird stuff with CircuitPython and Ripples and more, so. Yeah, I'm hoping to blow some minds here. Yeah. Uh, I like this cat. Trying to, yeah, Spook is hanging out. Okay. <laughs> um, join my deep dive streams if you want to see cat cam. <laughs> uh, that's the main reason people watch, I think, is to, to look at the cat. Okay, so what I've got here is when I switch my camera, I've got the HDMI to USB converter from the shop. And it's connected to a Raspberry Pi uh, CM4 board. And so this is HDMI output from the Raspberry Pi running CircuitPython only. What? So there's no, no Linux, no nothing. What? It's just CircuitPython. 
And I showed this on my stream on Friday, last Friday, and it was pretty slow, but I finally figured out the issue. And so it's like, look at that. Pretty darn quick. You're making um, a full computer operating system with Circuit Python. Yeah, I when I when I tell people my idea for this, I'm like, I just really want like the Commodore 64, but modernized, uh, including the software. So yeah, this is so run Python. This is Python uh, giving you that low level feeling on a high level chip uh, with a ton of a ton of RAM and a ton of speed. So that's going to be uh, a pretty awesome upgrade path for people doing Circuit Python. All right, so. Um... Deep dive this week, people can uh, jump in and ask you a bunch of questions. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch. Always, always. Okay. And and I may or may not be dressing up on Friday yeah, as well. Same. As Blinka. I don't know. We're I'm doing sure. we're doing costume we shall see. for the day too. So all right. All right. Thank all right. You, Thanks so much, Scott. Scott. Thank you. All right. Next up we're gonna okay, go to a couple Michael. people. Yeah, as long as everyone one, two does it. Uh, yeah, we're a little chatty. How are you guys? Keep it to a minute and a half each, everybody, and we can get to everyone. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, just a uh, continuation on my crazy uh, pyramid sculpture thing. So mm -hmm. I got the 3D prints done. Uh, and, and I'm really happy with this, how it turned out. I spray painted it. So it's all like shiny and stuff. So this is like mm -hmm. the inside area. Oh, it's a little wacky. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, so the paper will be able to go through in there. But yeah, the top part just would slide right over. Uh, which is really awesome. And, and then new, over new here, MacBook, I have a new MacBooks look really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is um, this is all the hardware that's going to be going in there. Um, here, let me turn that on. It's just a little test right now, just to see if everything works. So I have the iSpire display. I have NeoPixels. There is going to be like 41 NeoPixels all like surrounding the thing, which is going to be really cool. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the distance sensor, um, and I have it set so it should start printing if it's uh, like three inches away. It'll take a second there. Um, yeah, it should start in a second. <laughs> Live demos. Um, oh, that's too close. Sorry. Okay. But yeah, it, it printed earlier, so that's all that matters. Um, yeah. But yeah, that should print then. All um, right. Well, but yeah. Keep, keep coming back and showing the progress. It's looking really good. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Oh, now it's printing. <laughs> Here, let me show you. Yeah, it's printing. A little test now. It just took a second, I guess. It looks good. I cannot, I cannot wait for the mythical pyramid to speak to me. The, the demo gods sometimes are late, but they're they're dressed to kill. So. All right, thanks, Michael. Yeah. All right. Next up. Uh, Hey, Rick, how's hey, it going? Rick. Hey, how you doing? A minute and a half, we can get to everybody. Yeah, well, I'll give it a try. Let's see, can I share my screen here? Yeah, if you hit share okay. screen, as soon as I see it pop up here, I will uh, toss it up to the big board here. Right. Nothing yet. Here we, go. here we go. All right, yeah, I just wanted to show you quick how I made this thing work, my uh, air, air conditioning control. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Basically, I used this circuit I found online here with an H1, H11A1. And it works really great. The only ch change I made was the 10K pull-up external. And uh, that will detect any 24-volt circuit. Mm. And then I use this controller here, which has got a feather, relay board, power supply for 24 volts to 5 volts, and uh, one of your permaprotos with all, this, all the circuits on it. And that, control, that, that along with some sensors, controls the, um, um, the computer. I mean, controls the air conditioner. Uh, it's really easy to do because basically air conditioner is controlled by 24 volts being there or not there and turns on relays in the system. So you can use these relays. I use one to turn on the duct and one to turn on the humidistat, I mean the humidifier and the um, the duct that, the damper that goes to it. And so it, HVAC is fairly easy to do. It's just like I said, you, you just got to know what you're looking at. Yeah. And, you know, then this is my controller that sits on my uh, uh, my dresser and it's got I, I use one of your shields here to uh, control the whole thing along with a, um, a mega 2650 whatever they are. yeah nice work cool all right we'll keep yeah, coming back and, and showing the stuff we're gonna be doing a lot of like um, home monitoring and more so um, keep your eye on the stuff that we're doing we're have uh, adafruit IO projects 
uh -huh. to get some of the data of this stuff online because a lot of HVAC systems are just they're not internet connected and no, no. You, well, you this, this this is an older one and it uh is that it has a, a its own controller in there but yeah. I'm actually bypassing that for one of the ducts that yeah. to my room. We did that in our apartment for the thermostat. Okay, cool. All right. All right, nice work. Nice Thank work, you, Rick. Rick. Thanks. And thanks for coming for coming back. Yeah. All right. We're gonna go to Christy next, and then we're gonna go to Doctor, and then Dan and then Mark. So everybody, just uh, mind the clock and go, go, go. Hi. Uh, so Hello. I have. I'm, I want to show something that I'm making for Halloween, and I'll try to get into the view of the camera here. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a pumpkin patch scene. Pumpkin patch with a full moon. Um, and there are these keycaps I found on Etsy with jack o' lanterns. Oh. And then. There's a neo key in each one neo key breakout board, and if you press a key, you may not be able to see that very well. Oh, the moon. I should have made it brighter. I don't know if you can see, but when I press the green key, the moon is lighting up green. Yeah, barely. Uh, I see. I press, the camera is blown out a little bit. Yeah. So it's yeah. I should have I should have pumped it up even brighter. Um, but yeah, and I'll show you something really scary. If I turn it around, <laughs> I've got all these wires. And so the next step is to kind of clean, you know, clean this up. It's not that scary. Yeah, <laughs> These are wires are color coded. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to show. Nice. All right. Pumpkin-y. Thanks so much, Kristen. Happy Halloween. Keep coming In back. In season. And more. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Pumpkin Spice Tronics. All right. Next All right. up, Doctor. Hi there. How's it going? Hey, Doctor. Yeah. All right. So I got something pretty simple, but I think it'll be useful. Uh, so my lights that I've had under my desk for the last 10 or 15 years decided they're not going to work anymore. They just blink randomly. Mm -hmm. So I picked up some of these 4-watt RGBW NeoPixels. They're so bright. And they're so bright, and I think they will perfectly replace the 10-watt halogen bulbs I had. Uh, so I'm going to put them in the original enclosures so okay. I can reuse some of it at least. And uh, I made use of one of my... From a proto boards and made this control interface. Ooh. That's, some, uh, That's nice. Colored buttons. Yeah, so I decided I was going to do um, one for each color. So I've got RG, red, green, blue, white, so I can individually control the color channels, display to show me what the values are on and off. So come together, and I have so many of these boards, I had to figure out something to do, right? That's exactly what they're for. Good work. Thanks for your time. Take it easy, guys. We nice so CRT in the background there. Some classic old <laughs> and, uh, Tronics. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. That's that's old LCD. That's from 1998. Okay, it's yeah. got that neck and, neck TFT CRT look to it. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's got that chunky look. Yeah. And uh, so. you know, for everyone out there who watches Show and Tell, bring by retro stuff too. I mean, Show and Tell is all about the old tech that we all get inspired by, and then some of the new stuff that we're building. As well. Pulse, that's always fun. Always okay. All, All right. right. Thank, Thank you, doctor. you, doctor. All right, Dan, and keep it to a minute and a half, and then we can get to Mark, and that'll be a successful show and tell. Take it away. Unmute your mic and tell us what you got. Had a doodly, folks. Hey. Um, I, I know I've shown this before and whatnot, but you, you know things get put off. And Start again. Everyone has short-term memory now. So I don't remember what yeah. it is. Show it to me Who again. Who are you? Why I are don't you know here? what you're doing. Welcome to the show. Well, call me George. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, um, the as they say, you put stuff off and then life has its own ideas. And yeah, do you remember uh, way back in the day when you're, you guys were talking about how your building got condemned while you're building your business? Well, mine did. So Yay. yeah, I can tell. Here's our apartment. But why should that stop me? Um. <laughs> <laughs> managed to get a few things out of storage and whatnot. Garbage picked a really big whiteboard. And hey, what show and tell wouldn't be with without the furkin. That's right. What, what's but, the uh, dog friend's name? Gotta gotta ask. It's a rule. What's that, Phil? What's the dog's name? It's a rule we have to ask. What's the dog's name? <laughs> Canine Fuzzy Pants. Right, that's what my that was gonna be my second guess. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise known as Wiggle Butt, and right. of course he could come out and say hello. Hi, uh, he's wiggling that. his butt, so yeah, that makes sense. All right, so this is your workshop for now, and your. Uh... Hey, you can't get worse than condemned, so you might as well grab all the stuff you can and yeah. and do whatever you want. Absolutely, and uh, but worse. what I was, 
about showing it before, um, the open source power chair. So I've been diving into it and I've got time, so why not, you know? Yeah. I put it off and uh, so I've just been learning Adafruit tutorials, uh, like learning how to do the uh, potentiometers. I forget which tutorial that, that this one is from, but I was tinkering with that earlier. I just got the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Joystick that I wanted. It's a three axis plus a button on top. Gotta love that. Um, but yeah, I've just been uh, soldering and wiring and and pulling out some of the old favorites. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, you guys All are right, having well, fun. Keep coming Dan. back as you rebuild your workshop and more, and we look forward to seeing your uh, project. And I think good timing with your Wi Fi because it just stopped going. Whoa, All right, next are. up, Mark. All right, Why don't Mark, you play us out? Play us out. Spooky. Oh, this is great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't know if you can, how well you can hear that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just I screaming, it's, I think. I don't yeah, know. So the little, there's a, a yeah, our sensor, it looks like, and then when it's in front, it does the little uh, skull talker. Yeah. So let me just stop that for a second because I'm not going to hear anything. Uh, yeah. So it's a uh, distance sensor. Uh, it's actually can based on light too. I did a bunch of like jump scare laughing skulls last year um, that ran on a whole bunch of different Adafruit boards that were all light sense. So for the Hackaday Halloween contest this year, I decided to uh, actually make a 3D enclosure for all the electronics. And rather than just make it based on light, make it based on distance. So you can place this anywhere you want, and the ultrasonic sensor will detect when somebody's close and start screaming at them. Good. Right on. That's what we want. Well, thanks for showing this and keeping <laughs> it Halloween theme tonight. Very much appreciated. And uh, keep coming back with cool projects. Good work, Mark. Yeah, thanks a lot. Oh, it's been great. Nice, nice ambient lighting too. Yeah. Spooky. All right, that's our show for tonight. Tonight's a very special night. We're doing the AdaBox unboxing. Um, we weren't sure if we were gonna be able to ship AdaBoxes. Some people got them, some people they are still in transit. It is the world it is right now with supply chain and- But we didn't want to pause the pricing. unboxing because we wanted to do yeah, it Yeah, we still wanted to do it because some people are gonna have them. Um, we have uh, a URL, AdaBox, is adafruit.com slash adabox20shipping gives you an update. And also uh, for folks who get them, there is uh, some zip ties that are included. Some of them work, some of them don't. Sorry, it is just the supply chain nightmare. We are living in a world, in. in a society, and in a society where you can't get things anymore. And if this is the worst thing that's ever happened to you, instead of being mean on Twitter or to our team, just send an email to support at adafruit.com and pause your subscription. That's all you gotta do. We're gonna keep doing Adabox, and next year there's gonna be plenty of Adaboxes, but if, if this is the worst thing and, and you're gonna hate forever, um, it's not worth it. Just press pause, come back later. So uh, unboxing starts in about 30 seconds or so, and we'll see everybody next week on Ask an Engineer. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye.